Hi there, everybody. It's uh, Kyle Kruger with Kruger with a Dot. Um, I have guest star is a voice actor. Voice actress, sorry. Um, well, she's not a famous voice actress, but she's a YouTuber voice actress. Well, yeah, I'm a voice actress somewhat. <laughs> What's your name? I am known as Shelly Kitten. That's nice. So I um, want I wanted to ask uh, you a lot of questions. Okay. Uh, I just hope I'm prepared for it. What is your inspiration of being a voice a actor or actress? Oh well, um, I think the biggest inspiration was well I grew up like most kids watching a lot of cartoons and I always used to enjoy doing uh, funny voices as well. Um, me and my brother, funnily enough, used to do, uh, used to record ourselves doing different sort of voices, pretending we were certain characters that we liked. Um, and we also created our own sort of characters where we did like fake radio shows uh, for a short time. And we went on doing that for a little while. And then as we got older, obviously, we just drifted away from that sort of thing. Um, did our own things, went to college and stuff. But during that time, I just felt like I needed to perform again. I needed to start acting. And I've done the I've done theatre, I've done TV, I've done quite a few things, including script writing, and I've done radio quite recently as well. Um, I presented a radio show recently on a uh, on a network that's local to me. Um, it's not a famous one, so you know it's it's a place to start at least. Um, and I have uh, right now, the uh, today doing the YouTube stuff uh, where I'm voicing over uh, fan comics and sometimes official comics. Uh, there's one I'm working on right now, which is a Steven Universe one uh, because. The ones I've, I've found I've done recently, um, uh, the most favourite one is the uh, this Lapidot series that was done, where they're in an alternate world where they're humans, and a lot of people have really seemed to enjoy that. It's recently ended, actually. <laughs> so the only thought in my head is, what do we do now? You know, it's like, where do we go from here? But I'll figure it out. I'm working a few things on. That's but pretty much inspiration-wise. It's just all come from what I've enjoyed watching and some voice actors that I know. Uh, Sonny Stray is a particular voice actor who I who I look up to, and I have learned from him as well. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> I was. I'm still. I'm still gushing about it. <laughs> so I want. So what's it like doing a Steven Universe comic dub? difficult <laughs> um it's it, it's fun to do really um but most of the work tends to come from the editing end because uh, i'm trained as an editor as well so it's most of the work goes into the editing i do a few takes with the voices um i figure out where the sound effects can go what sort of music would work in the background and kind of then i paste it all together in adobe um but it's also figuring out where does it work, where's the right timing, is this too long to show, is this too short to show, does this sound, does this voice sound genuine, is this accent right, is this impression crap, you know, <laughs> I always have that sort of fear going on when I'm recording these things, but I do try, I just go by what I listen and I just think, you know, I can only do what I can. Um, people seem to enjoy it though, which I'm very, very amazed to see. Okay, so, si uh, sorry, I, I'm, what I meant to say was, that was awesome, that's awesome. Um, so, uh, what's your favorite comp page of the comic? Oh, well, my favorite page? Oh, it's too huge a comic to pick just one, I, the. To be honest, yeah, it's too huge to pick just one, I'd, I'd have think, uh, thought, rather, to get my dictionary back. Um, so I've enjoy, I think my favourite part is the 
where that where they're actually in a relationship and they're chasing around pumpkin the dog in the garden and lapis has just had a haircut and peridot is trying to say to her it looks really nice and when she eventually does stephen has to ruin the moment by saying you don't think she was lovely before <laughs> I love that. I love that bit. I had a, I had a fun time recording that one. Um, my favorite moment is where they're at the dance. Oh, the uh, the the part before the fi final one. Yeah, it's so yeah. it's so cute and adorable. And to be honestly fair, like it's a really nice scene because it shows like like Peridot needs to learn that she has to deal with the like she's in a relationship for the first time in her life and she has to realize that she, like she has to deal with the with the consequences of being in a relationship yeah and i think the the artist really captured that scene really well i mean she's the, the artist who did the comic is called uh, diamond 09 and she's an amazing artist and she created the whole so far series and I, I, well, I'll be honest, I can draw, but I don't think I could draw that well, nowhere near that well or that detailed. I think, I think I, 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 like, for me, like, I have, like, I have a creativity, like, an extremely good creativity, but I think I wouldn't be that good at drawing people. No, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not, I'm out of practice with drawing people. It's mostly, I can mostly draw animals more than people, but... You know, I've got the typical I can't draw a hand correct problem that a lot of artists tend to face. Right, right. Um, so, you love Sonic? Uh, I do like Sonic, yeah. I wanted to give you your advice since you made your own OC character. Oh, yes, uh, that is actually the Shelly Kitten character that represents my channel. Right. I have my own OC character. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, she's older. She's um, she's actually a mother. All right. Her name's uh, Inky the cat. She's uh, or Queen Inky the cat. Okay. She's the mother of Blaze. Oh. And um, she's uh, a very muchly a nice. Uh, person, but she's very tough, and she's oh, she's more like a warrior queen rather than a typical queen. Ah, I see. She's also bisexual. Oh, okay. A bit diverse. That's cool. She, uh, I, I put her in this relationship with Vanilla, the rabbit. Oh, Cream's mother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty creative. And it's also, and also, like, she, she's, it's actually a funny thing. Like, I made her this, I made her have this pro wrestler identity. <laughs> We've all got to have our secret lives, you know? Right. She's, uh, she's, uh, it's just that, it's just that I'm a huge fan of wrestling, and I like to put my, my love of, and passions into my creations. Yeah, uh, it's the same with me. With the uh, same with me, voice acting. Um, I like to try to put. Me, the key is this is something Sonny Straight told me to do. He said to me, when you playing a character, try to look up on their personality and think about how they might react should something happen to them. Put yourself in their mind and pretend that you're going through what they've just gone through. Say if they've gone through a bit of drama and they're angry be angry just feel that anger and just go for it just shout because he said it's he because he said it may feel silly to shout at the top of your lungs for no reason but it sounds even more sillier if you're faking it right uh, so right right that, that's true um so look uh i just want to tell you that like what what's your favorite friendship in the Sonic series? Um, my favorite friendship is probably uh, I've got two favorite friendships. I've got Sonic and Tails' friendship is really is really cute, and there's also 
the uh, probably a lesser fan favorite, depends on who you speak to, is Amy and Cream, because they have a kind of sisterly bond, and it's sort of like Cream's like the the tales to her Sonic, if you get what I mean. Right, I understand. Uh, like, want to know a fun fact? Like, when I like when I like like when I see Blaze and Cream together, I see not a friend but sisters. Yeah, yeah, the the more the kind of like. Big sister, little sister, sort of thing, or even a, or even, or even I don't know. Say like big sister, little sister, or even second parent, sort of thing. Like, like I like Blaze when she's around Cream. Like, don't get me wrong, Blaze is an amazing character, but I just like her when she's around Cream because it literally does show that she does have a softer side and all that stuff, and mm. and. That that's how I got the idea of doing the whole thing where their moms hook up. Yeah, because they both have a bit of a close bond. Do you think Do you think Blaze could be a good sister to Cream? I think she's already a good sister to Cream. She looks after her. She makes sure she's okay. She's she she tolerates her really, and there's a lot Blaze can't tolerate because she's so sensible and. Serious. Very, very, very serious and hardly laid back or anything, and always on her guard. But yet, when she's actually with Cream, who's this little six-year-old who looks up to her and sees her as, oh, you're just this amazing person, you're so great, you're my best friend, Blaze. She goes soft with her, and you see a side to her that nobody else gets to see, that she would never show anybody. That's, it's so nice, and... Um, the reason I ask you is because I feel like I need to work on my OC character, and, like, I need your advice. Hmm. I th from, from what you've told me, um, it pretty much sounds... It, it sounds good where it is, because uh, you've got some really good ideas, but if you were to... If you wanted to boost up the relationship between Blaze and Cream, uh... That would probably be really important for sort of... Say, like, if you do fan fiction, for example, that's really important for character development from... For, well, personally, how I think of it. Because you see a different side to Blaze that you wouldn't see, and Cream makes her feel more open to her, to her em emotions. And the key to character development is understanding how that character feels at that moment. And how they can slightly change how they how they are towards other people, because of how somebody else makes them feel, and they can feel more comfort in, you know, they may not be little kids like she is, but maybe I can be a little more open if I feel like I can trust people more, sort of thing. But obviously, it's not a rush. It's not going to be a rush job. Good character development takes a while, but it's evident that things change slowly over time. So uh, I. That's really good advice. That I understand. Um, so, like, when I do, like, Inky, like, I gotta, like, make, like, she's different from Blaze. Like, she's more open. She's, like, I'm trying to give her the, trying to give her, like, maybe powers, but I feel like it kind of contradicts the whole Blaze getting powers because Blaze getting powers is, like, a whole different story. Mm. From what I know of that story is in that future, in that sort of future where her and Silver are from, um, everybody in that future has a psychokinesis ability, like what Silver uses. But Blaze wasn't wasn't gifted with that. Instead, she got gifted with the power to create fire. And from what I read in her backstory is that she was often outcasted and bullied as a kid because she was one of the only ones without psychokinesis. And she was kind of often outcasted, and Silver was one of the only friends she had who grew up with her. That's sort because, of that's but, more like the Sonic 06 backstory. Is it a bit different in the other ones? Because that's the only one I've heard. Of like hers. in Rush, like that's her introduction. It's much different. Mm. Yeah, Sonic 06 sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it was it was rushed. It was so rushed that. It's you know you know how some people say well you know like you know like when like when there's a movie based off an anime not like a live action one like an anime movie based mm. off an anime like they say well it was rushed because it felt more like a long episode of the show like 
I have seen anime movies that have more that ha that are like filler episodes have more work done than Sonic 06 ever did. Yeah, and there's a lot of anime that has tons of filler. Uh, there's, I think I, I mean I don't watch Naruto. Uh, but you have but heard really, about I've the heard filler. Naruto is pretty bad for filler. One Piece is at least good with filler episodes because at least they're to the point. Yeah, they just add little extra stories, like, based on based on anything random that comes up that the that the original author says, oh, maybe it'd be quite, be quite nice if we did five-episode break and just put this in, for example. And he came up with, like, a little story they could do that wasn't official. Right. But, but the... The, but if you just put filler for the sake of filler, rather than let's just put it for character development or let's just put it as like then a it's little pointless. story, yeah, then it's pointless. Yeah, it, it's just that it's just like like here's an example. Like there's this one One Piece episode where like it's just about Chopper telling Robin the backstory of the Rumble Ball. Yeah. That was a nice episode, and plus, it really does, it does have this, it does carry the mother-son relationship of Chopper and Robin. Because mm. it, cause it, cause it kind of, the bond develops through that episode, as well as learning about how did Chopper get his rubble ball to begin with. And the manga doesn't explain that, because after Robin joins the crew, it's pretty much straight on Skypea. Right. So it doesn't, it doesn't really explain that, so when they do filler for anime... They kind of answer people's questions through filler sometimes, and I think sometimes that's the best way to use it. And say so like, because Chopper's at first, I'm really scared of her. She used to be my bad guy. I don't trust her. And then she just says, "Oh well, let's." Which says, "Well, we need to get some more water, so let's both go and do that." Well, he's still a bit. Oh, oh, you know what? What's her game? Who, who is she? Why is she being nice to me? I don't trust this one. And then she just starts casually saying to him, you were saying something about the rumble ball, and he said, well, so it says, you said something about a teacher, who's that? And then he just starts getting into it, and just cozies up and says, well, she was my teacher, and I created the rumble ball when I was messing about with this stuff, and everything was going on, and da da da, and then he's just, then he just says, oh, did you have anyone? And he just kind of gets this feeling that, well, she might not have been as fortunate as me, because she doesn't really speak about stuff in her past so um yeah i think i might get to like her after all because she keeps a distance she knows who she is and she's not threatening anymore right. so it's kind of like a bit of character development for chopper in a way because you find out something about him and you also see him oh i'm not scared of her anymore i'm warming up to her now right and it's just like right but with the filler, at least you get to know the characters more. With Naruto, like, yeah, you'll have that one rare episode where, like, they do it, but then all the other episodes, they're mostly either comedy, they either just focus on a character you like, and they do nothing with it other than just show awesome, which, while is a good thing, is not development. Mm. I mean, I heard about one Naruto filler where all the way through it, he really needs to take a he needs to take a crap all the way through it, and he can't get to go because something keeps getting. Oh in his my way. god, that that sounds so. And, and, I, and I was like, that sounds like a bit of a waste of filler, really. Like, like you wasted, like I like. Do you want to? If I was like a funeral dude, do I would say we are here to celebrate these Japanese pe these nice Japanese people for wasting for wasting for for, for dying by wasting an episode of Naruto. They die. They died from starvation, force of writing, and and realize and, and realizing that they have made possibly the worst filler episode in the world. We should pray mm. for them. Sometimes you think you know it depends on what you do with filler, but if you're gonna waste it, you know don't don't make it impersonally right. because it kind of kind of makes people think, what are you showing me right now? What's this got to do with any of the arcs that are coming up? What's, Exa what's, the, what's the connection? Exactly, and, and and it's just so weird. So, uh, you love One Piece, right? I do. Yeah, I'm a massive One Piece fan. Well, well, here's the well, here's one of the things that I talk to fans, and they agree. And my cousin Osman does disagree with me, but he does get my point with this one. Yep. 
Okay, so during the Water 7 arc, like, Luffy makes... While Luffy is not the most best decision maker, he makes one of the more better decisions as a captain. Yeah. He has to let go of the Mary. And yeah. this yeah. this does not, like, go well with Usopp. And the thing is, is that I get Usopp... Like, he has a point the Mary is important, but... Like, he went too far. Like, he crossed the line. He accused Luffy for being a bad, for a bad person. Even though Luffy is not doing anything wrong, he's just, you know, he had to give up on a ship because it's not working well. And Ooh. then, and, and here's the worst part, Usopp didn't just give up on Luffy, he gave up on everybody because, because of a ship. And, like, don't get me wrong, Usopp is loyal to the ship, but guess what? He, he gave up on his friends. Hmm. That was his mistake, and that's why at the end of the arc, after Frankie joined, they wouldn't let him join back up unless he apologised. Why? Because they said, because they said he was in the wrong, not Luffy, because Luffy did made his decision as captain. He was doing his job, and he ended up getting in that fight, saying he never. He said he wanted to leave, and but the whole way through it, through um, Enis Lobby, when he's disguised as like a Soviet king. He is actually developing his character. They all know it's him because it's a stupid disguise, but they all know it's him, but they're just going along with it because they know he probably feels ashamed about the way he behaved, and now he's working with them. But... And at that point, Sanji kind of awakens his, you know, kind of pushes his inner demons aside to a point with what he's been feeling like, because he says, I'm sorry, I'm too... he just says to him, I'm sorry, I couldn't, have, couldn't save him myself, I'm too weak. I'm just, I'm just pathetic, I'm not as good as any of you. And Sanji kind of realises, it clicks then. He felt that if we dumped the Merry, because it, we saw it as no use to us anymore, because he's the weakest crew member, he was scared that we'd dump him one day, because things would get too tough for him to handle, we wouldn't want somebody like that with us. And he was afraid of that, which is why he gave it up himself more than anything. And that's when he says to him, You've got to do what I can't do while I do what you can't do. You can assess the situation, you can plan, you can figure things out. And out and out saying, we can't save her without you, kind of opens his mind up again. And he realises, you know, I told the greatest people in the world that I would, didn't want to know them anymore. But yet they still have every bit of faith in me like they ever did. And it just shocks me to no ends. Right. That it, gives me the, that it gives me the confidence to help them. And he helps them. He actually saves her at the last minute. So he does something really great. And he actually unmasks himself and tells Luffy that he's got to get up and finish fighting this guy, otherwise he'll die. And he says, we're all going to leave together. They do leave together, but he disappears again because he's still in shame. Why? But, then he but then he decides, I want to come back. But he's acting all like, oh, hey, nothing happened. Hey, I'm just going to come back, you know? And Zoro puts it straight. I'm not letting him back in until he apologizes. Right. Because what he did, because what he did was wrong. And he apologizes, and they come back. Right. But it was all a big character development for him, so I guess when Oda wrote all that leaving and coming back in, it was important for that character to kind of have a bit more development, mm -hmm. make his outlook a bit different, and his place within the crew a bit stronger. Right. It's just that... It's just that here's the thing. I take friendship very seriously. Yeah, so do I. And when I see a character that I love give up on his friends because of one fight, it felt like... Or because... Like, when when there's characters that give up on friendship, there, there's more complexity to that. But I felt mm. like Usopp just gave up on his friendship. And, like... And, like... I, I, like, I understand, he's standing up to his friend, and Harry Potter says that it's more important to stand up for your, to your friends than other people. Mm. But the thing is, is that Usopp gave up on his friends, not because, not because, and like, and I also feel like, like, here's a, here's an, here's a thing, thing. If, let, let's say Usopp wanted to, want, wanted to tell the crew that he wanted to come back, and, like, he hears Zoro telling Luffy that he's not allowing that. And Usopp hears the whole conversation. He sees that both Sanji and, and Zoro, yeah, even though they want him back in the inside, they don't want him back in the outside. You know why? 
because, because he of what because of the things he said and that he gave up on them. Right, and now all the other crew, and especially Robin, because she's not mad, but rather because see, Soro, Sanji, and Robin think that you gotta be loyal to us no matter what, and the other crew members have to realize that. And what would Usopp's reaction be like? Would he get mad at Zoro and tell him that no, I? To, or would he let his pride get to him, or would he agree with Zoro? Like, if, I suppose, I suppose in one way he would agree with him, because, it, for one instance, he's kind of scared of Zoro and Sanji because the two of them are just, like, I mean, they even call them two and Luffy the Monster Trio because they're the strongest crew members, but. He's, he's he's not he wouldn't agree because he's scared, but he'd agree because, you know, he'd probably be a little angry at first, and probably just walk out, but he'd only walk out in the sense of, I've got nothing to say to you, and when he means I've got nothing to say, it means, I need to think about what you said, because I, it's made me a bit angry, but you've got something you've got something that I need to think about. And he goes and thinks about it, and he realises what he said was correct, and that he was the one in the wrong. Because I think, when he apologised originally, I think he knew he was in the wrong anyway. But because he was stubborn, he didn't want to make himself appear weak. So he just wanted to come in and go, hey, how you doing everybody? Hey, guess what, I'm coming back. And just think, oh yeah, they'll take me back, sure, no problem. But they weren't having it. They were ignoring him until he apologised. To the point where they very almost left him. And at the very last minute, he screams, I'm sorry. And he explains himself. So, he, he, so, obviously, so yeah, obviously, by the panels and by the anime and the manga, he genuinely meant his apology. And he genuinely meant everything he said to them and how he felt. Right. Uh... But, before, but before that, he never explained himself. Because... From what I could tell, I think he was afraid to explain how he felt because of how negative he feels about himself. He didn't want to let everybody know that even though his body is weak, he didn't want to let them know his mind's weak either because he feels that would bring shame upon them to let someone like that in a tough group. And it was at that moment that he knew he'd probably lose them forever at that moment. He figured, I can't do this anymore, I've got to drop my pride and just say to him, look, I'm messed up right now, I seriously need you I'm really sorry about everything and then he gladly lets him back because he because he sees that he genuinely meant it and then he saw that he was hurting this whole time and he just needs them Right I, I see what you mean and like even though I didn't like what Usopp did I'm glad that Zoro and Sanji despite like wanting to give up on him had to help him learn those things. Yeah. Right. So, so, um, so, I, I wanted to ask you, like, what's your favorite Sonic game? Oh, well, um, I do enjoy playing Sonic Forces at the moment, mostly because of the OC aspect. And if it wasn't for that game, Shelly wouldn't exist. But, <laughs> so I'm thankful for that. Uh, but I think my most favourite, uh, I'd say in total, would probably be either Sonic 2 or Sonic 3. Mostly because I grew up with those two, and it's, you can play as Tails, and Tails is the best. <laughs> right. Um, my Tails is my favourite character. Amy's my favorite character, but I do love Tails. All right. So, um, so uh, my favorite Sonic game is Sonic Adventure One. I love that one as well, actually. But it's not my favorite because obviously it has its many, many flaws. But it is still one of it. It's still a personal sort of favorite. Right. 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 It's just right. Um, I like Sonic Adventure Two, but I'm just more of a fan of the original Sonic Adventure One, just in my opinion. Yeah, same. Um, so, uh, what do you like about my... Sorry sorry to be selfish. Like, what do you like about my OC character so far? Um, I think she's a, she's really creative. She's very well thought out. And you're adding her to the 
uh, official uh, canon universe, um, despite her, you know, despite her being non-canon, putting her in the canon universe as a mix-in is uh, it's, it's really it's really creative in my opinion. I like when people do that. And I know a lot of people might say, oh, well, oh, that's a bit weird, that's just self-insertion. It's like, it's not self-insertion if it's not you. That's somebody you've created. It's only self-insertion if you say it's you. But, you know, I know a lot of people don't like that, but I personally do like it because, you know, especially if it's a different character, because it's creativity, and a lot of people are probably going to hate me for saying this, but a lot of people who dis who kind of say, oh, you know, creating your own characters, da, da, da. I know a lot of Sonic OCs get a lot of bad rep because the fandom can be a bit toxic, but uh, I don't know. It's more creative than what most people could come out with. I mean, you've got a character, you're blending her in with the existing characters, and you're, built, you're trying to create relationships with those existing characters. And let's just say if Sonic Forces has managed to have loads of random created characters and definitely blend them in with the resistance lot who are all the official ones then what's the problem with putting regular OCs in before that game existed? Right. This is just, I, I think they did the OC choice in Sonic Forces because of how long the OCs online have been going on and I think they just thought hey why don't we actually put on, put on somebody's OC in the game why don't we just do that? And then loads of people went yeah well, that's pretty cool and then the other half were like, eh, selling out, well, or whatever, I liked it. <laughs> right, um, I, I will admit that Inka's not the most perfect character, but I at least try, and, you know, at least I put effort, and I think the reason why I wanted to do this whole bisexual character is because, A, they never done that before, and B, because, well, I just want to give Blaze, like, more character development, but, like, do it in a way that's... and give her more of a... and, and like, share more of her past, like, with her mother. Mm. And, like, also, Inka is a very nice... is very nice to Cream. She's very nice to Cream, and she also teaches Cream how to fight. Oh, that's good, because that kind of creates personal Cream character development as well. And also, um... Spoiler alert uh, to anybody who hasn't read, uh, who hasn't known me a long time, uh, actually, uh, Vanilla and, and Inky do get married. Oh, nice. And they do get to have a kid, and her name is, um, her name is, um, Forrest the Rabbit. So Cream has a little sister. Yeah. And oh, she's pretty cool. And she's purple. Purple Rabbit. Yes, and 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 I'm trying to get her her own unique power, like maybe nature powers. Maybe she can talk to animals. No, when I mean like nature, I mean like plants and vines and stuff. Uh. Because talking to animals, while is a good power, it's not the most useful one. No, because you can't really can't really fight with that. No, you could send animals to fight for you, but you're not fighting. Tails tried that in Sonic X and failed. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't do it. Do you all want to I wanted to say to Tails, Tails, I love you, but you cannot communicate to animals. Anim I'm just looking at you like, why is this fox stabbed just on in front of us telling us what we should be doing? And it's, it's like, it's like in the, in the, in the, in the, here's the more question. Like, they should say, why is this, why does he have shoes on? Like, that's what... <laughs> It's so weird and random. So, random. I also wanted to ask you... I also wanted to ask you about something. I also wanted to ask you, um... This is, this is sort of a stupid request, but I have... But I had to do it, you know why? Because a friend told me you should ask her if she want... If she could, you know, do a voice audition for Inky. And I was like, like, no, I'm not going to do that. And my... And my friend said, "You said, come on, dude, just be honest with her." And I had to be honest with you and say, "Maybe one day you can do an inky audition, not like an like just maybe a voice. That's it." No, I wouldn't mind doing that at some point. It, right. It's just that the reason I don't like the reason I'm afraid to ask you is because 
Like, it's just that I am not good with asking people. Like, I have a lot of social issues. Same here. I've, I've been social issues up and down all the time. Ask people something and I think, oh, should I ask you this? Oh, God, I'm going to sound so rude if I ask this. I know exactly what you mean. So, so um, my favorite voice actress is Laura Jill Miller. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, I'll tell you who she does. She's Kari from the English dub of Digimon. She, All right. She's Juniper Lee, a.k.a. June from the Life of Time of Juniper Lee. She's Lisa, okay. she's Lisa Loud from the Loud House. Okay. And she's Coco from the English dub of Zatch Bell. All right. I do, I do recognize uh, Carrie from Digimon because I, well, I did watch Digimon growing up. She was so, she was so perfect. Like the original dub by Fox Kids, like she was so perfect as Kari. It was like good casting choice. Yeah, that was the that was the original Saban dub. Yeah, um, I think with Digimon Adventure Try, I've yet to watch it, but it's the uh, same. This... The Digimon voices and some of the kid voices are actually the same cast from the Saban dub. Right, right. So, right. So I also met Steve Bloom, the guy who voiced. Uh, who was in Digimon as well? Yeah, he's uh, he's Steve Bloom's done quite a lot of voices as well. I love done... I love Steve Bloom, and I met him, and he's a really nice dude. But my favorite male voice actor is Scott McNeil. Oh, I've heard he's done a lot of voices, Scott McNeil. I, I want to tell Scott. I want to be. He's one of the. He, I heard he's a really funny dude, and I want to meet. And I want to meet him, and I also want to. Tell him that I want to be like you, like as, as a voice actor and a, and kind of a comedian. Mm. You heard of um, you heard of Gary Chalk? He does a lot of voices as well. I will, uh, also also um also uh if I was a, if I was a director, I would put Laura Jill Miller and Scott McNeil in all my movies. <laughs> nice. That's just a pet peeve of mine, and uh. So here's another question I want to ask. What, um, who, what, who's, like, who, like, who are your favorite voice actors? Well, um, my favorite voice actors, uh, I think my, my most favorite one is, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Sonny Strait. He's my all-time favorite voice actor, because he is just an amazing person, he's, and I've, and I've spoke to him on, in real life, because he's taught me a thing or two about voice acting as well and he's because he's, he's he's so polite he's so friendly he's very understanding kind of laid back really <laughs> he's just so nice to speak with and very patient and he's, he's he's an excellent teacher actually he's knows he's he's been in the industry so long he sounds like he knows it completely in and out and to be honest, it's it was an honor to learn from him, and it was amazing. It was amazing to have learned so much in such a short time. It was great. Um, he's my absolute favorite voice actor. Um, I have a few like um, like I, I like to watch um, I like to watch My Little Pony, um, and the voice actresses on that are good. Like I like Tara Strong, and she's done loads of things. Raven. I mean, she's Raven. Yeah. Um, she's actually, there's this new cartoon show out called Unikitty, and, and it's she the character from the Lego movie. And she does a great job. Yeah, Tara Strong voices Unikitty, and I was, I was so surprised to hear her voice coming out of that, and I was like, holy shit, that's Tara Strong. <laughs> so, um, she's, she does so many voices, even, even some of them, you can't tell it's her, like, she does Timmy Turner, um, she... It's Ben Tennyson. She, yeah, she did the young Ben Ten. Uh, she voiced, uh, you know, um, you know the cartoon uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Right. She voiced Max's brother Terence. Right. I was like, whoa! I had no idea. <laughs> she's good. She's really good. She she's brilliant. Yeah. Um, other voice actresses are like, uh, let's say, uh, Andrea Libman's really good. Um. She does a Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, in case you don't know. <laughs> I love the like that she she do go from squeaky to quiet in 1.2 seconds. Um, 
I also like, uh, tell you what, a, a recent voice actor that I've found that I like is uh, uh, Justin Roiland. Cool. He, do you know if you know who, you know who that is, right? Uh, is he a Rooster Teeth voice actor? Uh, no, he's uh, Rick and Morty. Oh, oh, he, oh, he, oh, he's the creator of Rick and Morty. Yeah. And he voices both of them as well. Oh, he's he's great. Uh, great. So, that that's that's cool. Like, so I also, yeah, I I now know what you mean. That's that's great. It's fair enough. Um, so, I also want to ask you, like, 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 I have this funny pet peeve that sometimes a good child actor can be a good voice actor. Hmm. It's, like, Laura Jo Miller, like, she was in a sitcom. And guess what? She's now a really famous, uh, not a famous, but an underrated voice actor, actress. She, uh, she's still my favorite in my opinion. And here's another example. Will Frito, uh, the guy who does the voice for, uh, Ron Stoppable and, uh, t and, t and, uh, Terry from Batman Beyond. Mm -hmm. He used to be in Boy Meets World. Oh, all right. And, 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 like, it's so weird. And then the, there's Danny Cooksey. He's, um, he's Dave the Barbarian. Uh, he's, um, he's, uh, but, uh, he was, um... He used to be in sitcoms, and like, and I was like, there's a theory here. There's so much of a theory that sometimes a young, a good child actor can be a good voice actor. Um, there's, there's, there is some truth to that, and there's some that's not so true about it. The true side is that if you have been acting for a long time, you know how to act. Not just in body, but in voice as well. Like, you know how to feel an emotion you know how to you know how to get to grips with your character you know how to get into their mind and you can become them because if you become them it makes you the character and the char you know you're the character the character is you all blends in and it all fit and it all fits in perfectly and you do the voices spot on and you can get the emotions right um and when you do it for years and a lot of people start out as kids yeah it can help but the only problem with child voice actors is they're always rushed about and it can often stress them out and they can deal with a lot of... They've often dealt with a lot of problems in later life as they've grown up because of all the pressure they've been put under with all the jobs and school and stuff like that. Um, but it, while it would help, it can be a bit depressing sometimes and a darker side of it. But it's, I do agree it does help, but on another hand, you don't have to really be a child to do it. Because, let's face it, um, I'm kind of a living example. Um, I was never a child voice actor. I did act voices a lot as a kid, but I didn't grow up voice acting, and I kind of didn't do it for years. Um, and I never really started it until, rec until recent times anyway, when I was learning through it. But... I did do a lot of, I did do theatre acting for five years, so, for, and from what I was taught as well, I actually started in the right direction, they said a good way to start out being a voice actor is if you learn to theatre act, because if you can act in a theatre, you can act in a booth, it's pretty much one in the same, because you're using your voices to the exact same strength and diction as you would do on stage. That's awesome. I also wanted to show you some voice impressions I did. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, go on. All right. So there's Gilmon from Digimon Tamers. Okay. Takato is that you, Gilmon, Brad? <laughs> oh, do you know what? I've not seen. I have heard his voice before, and I always thought he sounds a bit like Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. I thought that I thought that was true. Well, Digimon Tamers came before Lilo and Stitch. Yes, someone stole someone's voice there. <laughs> well, I don't think so. I think it was accidental. But the thing is, is that I is is that, and I also could do Kido 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 from uh, Dragon Ball GT. Yeah. And, uh, I could do, like, gosh, freaking idiots, like, Napoleon Dynamite and stuff. Hmm. 
And okay, that that one wasn't a good example. Like, it, I I I sound nothing like Josh Heater, the guy who does them. But maybe if I met him, maybe he can teach me a little bit of doing that voice. Yeah, one thing with impressions is uh, you can try to sound like them, but what's more important is how you emote rather than how you sound. You can try to match the voice. That is a good skill if you can match the voice, but it doesn't have to be exactly as, because if there's people out there who expect you to sound exactly the same, you might as well be that person who originally did it. It's, you're asking, they're asking the impossible out of you. You just do it as close as you can. And if you can do it amazingly, you know, good on you. But if you can't do it amazingly, but still have that sort of voice, it works. I mean, for example, me, when I did, when I did Peridot in those comics, um, Peridot isn't really, uh, doesn't really sound as nasally as I put it. But it's one good way to kind of added in like I can just talk like this and all of a sudden um, I just kind of go into the back of my throat and the back of my sinuses and then suddenly I can just go like this and think hey Lapis uh, how you doing uh, stuff like that and it and it all comes from back of my nose so it kind of makes it sound a little nasally but and I know and I know Peridot isn't full on nasally but that's as close as I can get it but I try to make a sound sort of I really geeky sort of sound sort of you know because she is pretty geeky she's nerdy so I, I bet she plays Pokemon Go in. sorry I bet she plays Pokemon Go she probably does <laughs> or Pokemon Stadium in fact I play Pokemon Stadium it's a really fun game I, I used to play Pokemon Stadium <laughs> That was years and years ago. I'm trying to get the Master Ball, Ball trophy, and it's really hard. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people who talk about Pokémon Tournament now, but uh, it's similar to Pokémon Stadium, I'd have thought. Instead, it's, you know, fight more fighting game, I guess. Still, you know, uh, you ship Paradon and Lapis together, and you do a great... Do you voice both of them? Uh, I do voice both of them, yeah. So what's it like? Like, it's so really good because you got their characters to a T. And, like, it, it's mostly the comic, but you got their characters to a T. I love how you do Peridot, and I love how you do Lapis, and I, I really do like how you did, did all of that. Like, and one of the things I wanted to do is that if you have a voice acting project... I want to be part of it. No, oh my god, I said something stupid. Oh my god. No, it's just fine. I mean, it's kind of a common thing, because uh, a lot of people, if they do like what you do, they would say, can I voice it with you? And it's like, that's, that's fine, that's totally fine. No, I, I, no, that would be that would be amazing, because I really do need more people to help with projects in the future. <sighs> so at some point, if, you could, if I find a project that I think, you know what, you could voice this guy, and then I could say... Hey, do you know what? Do you want to do this? La right. And it's just, like, that. Like that's the thing about me, is that, like, when I'm enthusiastic, like, but sometimes by, like, most of the time, like, 100%, I accidentally say the wrong things. And, like, I gotta say, oh, sorry, dude. Like, oh, I don't mean to do it. Like, like, at, like, like, and, like, people say, no, no, it's fine, you know. But it's just that, for me, it's hard. No, I understand what you mean. I'm kind of like that way, because... I've I've kind of uh, done it. I've I've done it with Sonny Straight a couple of times. I'd say I'd just say to him, I'd say, can I? Uh, I says you might says, would you possibly maybe want to do like a small voice thing with me at some point? And straight away you just went, yeah, yeah, maybe. I thought at some point. Uh, I was really shocked. At, I was really shocked at how quickly he said that. What? <laughs> I know you're a busy person. He went, oh yeah, yeah, I'll figure something out. Dang, <laughs> like you have the guts. <laughs> and he, he even said to me, he said, he said, he said, if there's ever a point where to boost your channel up, if you want to interview me, I'll give you the go ahead. Dang, man! And I was like, and I was like, what? <laughs> Dude, you're lucky. You're lucky. Like I, like I, like I wish I had a vo like a professional voice actor. No offense. No, there's no offense in there. <laughs> like I, like I wish, I wish I had Laura Jill Miller, Scott McNeil, 
Steve Bloom. I wish I had the cast of Teen Titans on my show. <laughs> that would be that would be incredible to just like so, put them all on there and then just say to them, "Let's talk Teen Titans, not go." <laughs> like like okay like here want to know something, like yep. of, about me like here's the thing like I love Teen Titans and I hate Teen Titans Go and like I have this weird fantasy like when I mean weird like it's down to earth like fantasy of me telling like all the cast members like the five original voice actors like scott menville K kari payton tara strong hinden walsh and greg sipes that i don't like teen titans go and then i have and then i think of the worst possible things they like maybe they drove me off a window because i said that and like i'm scared to tell them you know why why Be because because I, I feel like I'm hurting their feelings because I don't like something they do. Like, it's not because, it, like, they do a show that they like, but in reality, I don't like the show. Like, both, not in voice acting. The voice acting in Teen Titans Go! is great. Like, I just don't like their show written-wise, like, mm -hmm. comedy-wise, everything about Teen Titans Go! Except the voice acting, and maybe, like, Jinx are, like, the best part. Like, other than that... Oh, in the animation, but other than that, like, I don't want, I just don't want them to get mad or sad at, or I don't want to hurt their feelings by saying, I like you guys, I like you guys, but I just don't like Teen Titans Go. Mm. I, I, th I think, uh, when you say in terms of writing and animation, that'll be more to Cartoon Network, that'll be more to slander Cartoon Network more than the cast. Because while the cast do work for Cartoon Network to voice, to voice it. They have no um, control. They just get the script and go right do this that's that's pretty much honestly what they'd say they'd say oh they ask us to come in to record some lines we do that for a couple of hours get paid we're off they just do the rest and i heard they have fun doing it and and don't get me wrong like i know their they know their characters are out of character in that show but i'm scared to tell them why i don't like your character i like your voice acting but i just don't like your character I think they've heard much worse than that from people who spoke to them. I think they've definitely heard much worse. And like, like, I'm not trying to be a terrible person. I'm just trying to say I just don't like Robin because he's an arrogant jerk. I don't like Raven because she's not written well. I just don't like Cyborg and Beast Boy because they're a terrible duo character. And I don't like Starfire because, the, because she's not betrayed as a socially challenged person, but betrayed as a dumb person. Like, I want to say that to them, but I don't want to say it in a way that makes... That makes them hurt, like, you know? And if they defend mm. themselves, that's totally fine. I don't blame them for defending their characters. I mean, all, I mean, the simplest thing you could say is just say, like, I don't really, I'm not a fan of, all you could say is just, like, I just, I'm just not a fan of Teen Titans Go. Just pretty much just leave it there. And if they ask you, like, why? Oh, and they, just, it, it, they could, they could just laugh, they could just laugh a bit and just, like, oh, it's not the first time we've heard that. Then they'll go like, oh no, and says, oh, I, I think I can guess which bit you don't like, so yeah. They'll either say, oh, what don't you like about it, or they'll just go, oh, we'll just leave it there. Oh, that's funny, it's just the, not the first time we've heard that. Like, like <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying, it's just I'm scared to do it, and and if they do watch this, which will, which will possibly, they won't watch this, I, I just want to say to you guys, you guys are awesome, I just don't like Teen Titans Go, that's it. Um, yeah, I think they'd understand. Absolutely understand. I mean, they've done, they've done lots of other voice roles that loads of people didn't like, and they just gotta keep. It's just their job, you know. And they just gotta keep doing it. Right. And I also wanted. And I also wanted wanted to tell you that your comic dubs of of the parrot of the uh, of so far is really damn good. And I want to tell. And I want to say to everybody who watches my, who's on my Facebook or my DeviantArt, go check it out. Just go check it out. It's Diamond 09. That's who. That's who. Art, who arted it. Well, Seriously, support her because she's an amazing artist. She's a good storyteller, so definitely support her. I hope she works on Steven Universe if the show goes that long. Sorry. Like I hope she works for Steven Universe in the future. Oh, it definitely will see more from me in the future. Got a couple at the moment that I'm. Um. Next thing I'll probably put up as well is uh, a very nice commenter gave me the idea to put up a 
full-length version of the entire So Far story. And I thought, yeah, why not? That would be, be a good thing to do, right. because that way... I have I have got each individual video in a playlist in the order, but I figure, yeah, put them in a whole video as well. Why not? It'd be quite an easy watch. Right. I also I also wanted to tell you that um that 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 uh I that your that your work is amazing and that you 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 deserve a lot of credit. Thank you. And I also and I all and, and also uh and I also wanted to tell people that um that she uh that if you were a voice actor, if I was a director, I would actually want you to be in some of my movies. Oh jeez, thank you. Because you're really good. You're really good. And and I think you could be a pro. I'd love to be a pro one day. It's kind of one thing I've been chasing down, but uh, we'll see, I guess. We'll right. figure things out. Right. And right. There's also a celebrity I can do. Like uh, like I don't like celebrity voice acting is like when I mean celebrity voice acting, I mean like doing an impression like is not easy, and like, like he's like a well-known professional wrestler, and that's Macho Man Randy Savage, and I could do his voice. Like it's not perfect, but I worked on that voice, and guess what? It's and guess what? Like people say, oh, you're doing a good job, and I wanted to show it to you. Go ahead. Okay, watch this. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Macho Man is here. Right now, I want to tell you guys that, uh, you guys that I am the cream of the crop. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and like, in like, and like, that's the thing. Like, when every time when I do it, like my bo like I have to be the most raspiest person on the planet. Yeah, raspiness can be a bit tough on the throat. Like, like it's, but... and like I did, it, like I did this voice one time. Like one time, my friend like Dusty said, said said you gotta do this voice like when, when, when like when we go to a Halloween party. Like I did that voice for ten minutes, and guess what? I I, I think I I, I think I, I I almost lost my voice. Yeah, like I say, uh, raspiness can be really tough. It's like if you try to make your voice sound raspy or gritty. It, it, uh, it hurts. It really, it really does kill your throat after a while. Right, and, and like, I'm like my voice was like, "Hey guys, what's up?" It was like, "Hey guys, what's up?" Like it was like this for the rest of the day, and like, and like I wasn't mad at Dusty. Like it was worth it, but I was like, "How worth it was it?" Uh, I'd have to say if you were showing off a talent, it's definitely worth it. And like, and, and like. And, and and if there and and I want to say to this, if there's ever going to be a wrestling video game, and if you want a voice for Macho Man Randy Savage, then just call me because I can do the voice. Like I can, tr like it's not perfect, but at least I can try. Yeah, I mean, that's, all you can do is try, you know, because that's what audition. All you can do is try. Right. Also, do you hear my, uh, just out of curiosity, uh, do you want to hear my Macho Man? Yeah. Not as good as yours, because obviously I don't have the deep voice, <laughs> but I can go for it at least. Wanna slam to a Slim Jim? <laughs> it, that was actually funny. Like, my, like, I want to do the slam to a Slim Jim! You gotta put emphasis on the T! Excitement! Ex excitement! <laughs> Like, 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 and I, and, and like, and here's what I do when every time when I talk to a wrestling fan, do I say to him, how does he do that? Like, this cannot be his normal voice. It is a stunt. Like, wrestling is a stunt. I get that. But how does he do that voice? Like, how does he do that? And like, and, oh. and, and like, and like, I was like, uh, and then my friends were like, maybe, maybe he just had a lot of practice. Like, no way. There is no way a former baseball player can have this, can be this charismatic to come up with this voice. Oh no, I mean, that's that's got that's got to kill him after a while. Cause if you were to just talk like that all the time, it gets so it gets it hurts. It must have hurt for him. He probably started out talking normally, and then I mean, I can imagine. <laughs> They were like, oh yeah, I want Slim Jim, and then he goes off stage and he's like, can I have a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so. He's not British. He's not British, by the way. No, and I, I, I know, but you can imagine 
it'd just be really funny if he turned out that he was because it's because i think what it is it's a possibility he could have been one of those people who put on a voice to match how he looked like he put a voice to the face um because there's some people who don't have a voice to the face who actually talk like that normally like i've seen a guy who looks absolutely tough as nails and he's got the meekest voice you've ever heard That's so not... and you think how does that voice come out of that right and what Right, and like that's what I question about Randy Savage, but in reality, he's a great talker, and I don't want to disrespect him, but I just want to, if he was still alive, I just want to know, how do you do that? But, like, mm. but guess what, but I'm just proud to do a Macho Man voice, and you know what, and you know what, that could be, that, that could be my best celebrity voice, like, like, for example, like, Tom Kane, he has a great Morgan Freeman voice. Mm-hmm. And maybe I can have a great Macho Man Randy Savage voice. Yeah, you could. Um, uh, man, it's just talking to, about voice acting with you is just like an honor. It's like, it's just an honor. Like, uh, it makes me happy. <laughs> I'm glad I've made you happy. Right, right, right now, well, I, I'm doing... I, I really enjoy making people happy, so that is an honor to me I'm, to know that. I'm doing a heart logo, like, in my chest. <laughs> with my hands. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I'm not the best podcaster, by the way. No, that's that's fine. Podcast is what you make it to be. You know, nobody makes the rules. Right, and like, and like, I just wanted to say, you're awesome, and I'm glad I had you for a guest, and uh, and I'm gonna give you some dialogue for the Inca for the uh, Inca thing, and I'm gonna show you some images. Like some deviant art images, so that way you can do the voice, and I'll send it to you. Like, I don't know where, but I will. Yeah, I'll look forward to seeing it at some point. Right. So I hope. So this has been Kruger with a thought. Everybody, say, uh, say hello to this person. Uh, say hello to Shelly, and say good day to her. Have a great day, guys.